All right, so what we have here is a complete concept, all right? This is just going to be a little micro model to demonstrate the concept. And what we have here might not look like a skateboard, but that's because it's inside out. All this is, is a three-dimensional shape. It's a shell. It's a shell that will actually become the surfaces of a complete skateboard deck. So, once we have this exterior shell of a 3D shape, we can then slide it on to the stick, like so. And the stick will be the axis of rotation, so as... Just, so the whole thing, thing, the whole thing becomes a mandrel. Right. So this is, this is not the skateboard itself, but this is a mold for the making of the skateboard. Right. And once it's on the stick, it goes spinny. Oh yeah. That's so, so, so what do we do with this? Well, we just spin it. We just spin it <laughs> and then it becomes a skateboard. <laughs> so once we get it on the stick and have a way of me mechanizing the rotation and controlling the speed, we can then take a filament or, you know, in the case of carbon fiber, it would be a toe of carbon fiber or Kevlar or even fiberglass, and we can control the thickness of this toe or, you know, this filament of carbon or composite material, and even the number of those toes, and then we can then install it onto our mandrel which will then pull the toe off the spool. And give us the opportunity to deposit composite material in a uniform pattern onto our mandrel. So we can control the orientation of the fibers as long as they're not tip to tail. It can, so you can, we can go pretty extreme angles. With yeah, this. we can go probably about a 60 degree angle, if not more. So this is, this is really janky. I'm getting pretty extreme angles already. Yeah. So basically we can control where there's thick portions of carbon, where there's thin portions of carbon, and we can also manipulate the material, whether it be Kevlar, carbon, or a mixture of all those. And we can also manipulate the fiber orientation so that it's stiffer in certain regions while being softer and more compliant in others. And then you can also tune the amount of flex and the type of flex and the direction of that flex to whatever you want. And this is a process that's actually used to make air cylinders. High pressure, high capacity air cylinders. A lot of the uh, hydrogen tanks that they're using on all these hydrogen cars are made by filament winding. So. After we've deposited a good layer of our uh, composite, we would then take this mandrel and then bake it in an oven. Because this, <laughs> even though that's string, it would be carbon fiber that's pre-preg, which means the epoxy is already embedded inside of that filament or that toe. Mm -hmm. So once this thing goes in the oven, you bake it like you're using your easy bake oven and boom. <laughs> You're thinking, wow, I've just made a giant lollipop. Is what we do here is we actually cut the thing off of the mandrel. Please. So, yep, just after this has been cured and hardened and it's just a totally hard, rigid shell, we can then sever the halves to create two halves. And work with me here. I know, I know this is a this is a long ways away, but we basically have a 3D shape a shell like this. This is what we've produced using our mandrel. You know, there are two 
op opposite shapes that create, you know, a bigger shape. And once we cut it off of the mandrel and separate it into two pieces, we now have a composite after we flip it that will actually fit and be congruent with one another. Mm -hmm. Now, because of the type of mold we're going to be using, we can actually make the top slightly different from the bottom so that the only places where they actually contact is going to be around the perimeter, around the edges, and there'll actually actually be a gap. A in, hollow space. A hollow space in between the top and the bottom, which can be filled with a polyurethane expanding foam, which will actually make the core of the board and, you know... It's a foam core. Exactly. But it's conjoined around the perimeter, around the edges, and a lot of the strength and the structure is coming from the types of shapes and the thicknesses and the material choices of these two halves after they've been conjoined. So that's how we create a skateboard deck using this filament winding mandrel process. So you're thinking, whoa, that seems a little beyond what everything could be. And yes, you know, it is utilizing some pretty far out technology. But the thing that's really exciting to me is that this could potentially be an entirely mechanized process. Literally, you design your mold in computer space, you have it cut on, you know, a CNC machine, and then you load it up into the mandrel, push the button, and you've already programmed where you want each toe of carbon fiber to be placed on that skateboard deck. So you can tune the board entirely with, you know, computer-aided drafting and actually create the ultimate skateboard that will be literally printed layer by layer. And then it's just a matter of severing the two halves, bringing the two together and filling it with some kind of a, a core material. And you could hypothetically mass produce boards without laying up wood, without using glue, and it's just a matter of pushing the button, winding the thing, and baking it after, and then cutting it up and turning it into a skateboard deck. So, I don't know. I haven't completed this project, but it'll be really interesting to see some of the process that is required to make a board like no other board's been made before. So there's advantages, there's cost advantages to using filament winding, right? Oh yeah. Because you, you don't have to weave a cloth. You don't have to weave cloth. You can deposit. Even though this doesn't look like it's super efficient because you're just doing layer by layer, it's extremely fast. This is by far the most efficient use of carbon fiber. You can easily buy a spool of pre-impregnated carbon fiber toe, and then the real complexity is in the equipment, obviously, and the tooling to actually create your shapes. But the equipment for the filament winding is pretty standardized. Yeah. There's it, plenty of facilities that have that equipment. If, and then the one thing I wanna, I wanna, I wanna address here real quick is this, um, this two-sided design that we have here is just for simplicity. The, the mandrel that we've actually designed and drawn out for the theoretical conclusion of this project is actually three-sided. And it, would, it could potentially be two boards long. So you could, you could press up three boards, or you could, you could wind three boards up at the exact same time. So in, the, in a single operation, you, you, could, you could complete three boards. Yeah. And it could be three different designs as well. That's cool. Yeah. Whoa, man! You mean that's gonna be a skateboard? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> so, stay tuned. We'll hear yeah, pretty soon cool. actually get a, uh, this model completed. We'll get a hardened version yeah. and we'll create a micro model of the skateboard that we are talking dreaming about, about dreaming about yeah so like to see where this is going or if you want to see other crazy ideas that you come up with make sure you make sure you subscribe also make sure you comment and like this video um, 
and uh, we'll see you on the next planet. Longboard technology, over and out.